As many of you have heard by now, the uh, UK has uh, decided to leave the European Union by a vote of 51.9 to 48.2. And as you've seen from the market reactions around the world, it is a negative uh, move at this time. Of course, that is in the near term. In fact, in the near term, it's possible that the, Euro the uh, UK could uh, run into a recession. And this is what Stratford had to say regarding this uh, departure. It says, the formal declaration of the intention to leave will trigger a two-year negotiation period, during which the United Kingdom and the rest of the member states will hammer out the terms of the divorce and the framework of their new relationship. It is worth keeping in mind that while negotiations are taking place, the United Kingdom will remain a full member of the European Union. The free movement of goods, services, capital, and people between uh, Britain and the continent should remain unchanged until at least mid-2018. Any agreements between London and Brussels will then have, uh, have to be ratified by EU member states as well as the uh, EU and British parliaments, which could further delay the exit process. And by the time London and Brussels have reached a deal, the Continental Bloc will look uh, very different from how it looks today. And here's the analysis that Stratford gives, says the implications of the referendum will become clear in stages. In the immediate term, markets will react negatively to, this, to the results, as we've seen already. The uh, pound has already fallen by over 10%, and I'm sure since this article was brought forth, it's fallen even further, against the dollar and is on track for its worst single day decline in 45 years. Outside the U UK, emerging market currencies and oil prices are also dropping. And stock exchanges around the world are likely to follow with money moving into havens uh, such as the uh, Japanese yen and gold. And as we know, uh, today, global markets lost somewhere around $2 trillion. Now, as I said earlier, this very well could cause uh, the UK to uh, plunge into a recession, depending on how uh, negative the markets do react. We'll have to wait and see what happens uh, in the days ahead. Going on the article, says, Thus, the coming days will be marked, uh, marked by uncertainty, which will affect financial and economic decisions by investors and households around the world. Bond yields in the Eurozone uh, periphery are also likely to increase as investors move to havens such as Germany. Depending on the pressure on those countries, the ECB's promise to do whatever it takes to protect the Eurozone uh, by intervening on debt markets will be tested. Now, as we know, because of the departure from the EU, uh, Prime Minister David Cameron has st uh, stepped down. Now, as far as his departure is concerned, uh, that hasn't been set yet. But as we know right now, he is resigning. Now switching over to the Drudge Report, I'm looking at some of the headlines that concern the uh, UK departure. And it says, in some of the more explicit details, it says the pound is in a historic collapse. And in another sentence, it says Europe will fall very soon. And it also indicates that uh, this very well may be the end of the U.S.-EU trade deal. And here's an interesting headline. It says that regarding the U.S. elections, it says that Hillary and Obama are on the wrong side of history and that this is uh, Hillary Clinton's worst nightmare. Uh, and uh, under that headline, it says second major blow to Obama in as many days. Here's a headline that probably caught my eye more than anything. Brexit could signal Trump winning White House. So despite the imbalance in advertising campaign dollars between Clinton and uh, Trump, this single event by itself could very well usher Mr. Trump into the White House, depending on what happens between now and then, but this very well could be the case. But that is what the Drudge Report is uh, reporting. But as far as prophecy is concerned, let me go ahead and tell you what I, I believe uh, this is uh, going to entail. We know the Bible is pretty explicit at that the uh, kingdom that the Antichrist will come out of is the European Union. At this time, there are 28 members. Certainly in a couple of years, uh, the uh, UK will be officially out. But there are many in the political world, global political world, that believe that this very well could spell the end of the European Union. And I happen to be one of the one that believes that there will be some uh, immediate changes, but then there will be some uh, cataclysmic changes as well. And through these changes, uh, I believe there will be one 
revived union that will come forth, which will have ten nations. And through those ten nations, they will elect a leader to lead them. And I think that they're going to try to avoid what the, the pitfalls of the last uh, of the European Union as, as present. And the, pre, the, the uh, pitfalls basically are is that there is free trade and also free travel throughout the European Union, but they have no rules. And their financial systems simply don't mesh. And in order to get something done, every single nation has to approve it, especially when it comes to uh, any tri types of agreements. And that's why that over the years they've just never been able to get anything done and it's turned out to be a financial nightmare for the European Union. So I think what's going to happen is, is that this uh, 28 Kingdom uh, European Union is going to probably collapse into a 10 Kingdom nation. Now let me also say this is just speculation on my part, it's not biblical. All we know is that at the end, that at some point in time in the future, that the Antichrist will rise up out of a 10 nation kingdom and go on to rule. Now at the time there is no entity that exists that meets this uh, description uh, so I believe that at some point in time uh, that this will be the case. Now I know a lot of people say well this you know when the Antichrist comes on and rules it's going to be a 10 district nation or, or kingdom. Meaning that the world is going to be divided up into 10 different districts and each kingdom or each leader is going to have their own district in which the Antichrist will rule over all of them. So the world will be split up into ten different districts with each kingdom uh, ruling and the Antichrist taking precedent over all of them. Now again that's speculation on many of those who have brought this theory forward. Frankly I don't um, see that as being what will happen. I think what's going to happen is that the, the uh, European Union will be reduced to ten nations. And that's not to say that the lesser nations won't be on the outside looking in. You know, for years that uh, many in the European Union have been threatening a core EU which uh, could meet all the qualifications that they've been looking for. With um, most of the nations who are in the European Union right now uh, on the second level. Now, whether or not that's going to be the case, I don't know. But I do look for this ten kingdom uh, core of nations to come together at some point in time. And you know, one thing you should be looking at is that this is happening at about the time that the European Union is asking Israel to make peace with the Palestinians and the Arab world in exchange for unprecedented privileges and favors, some type of package that they're about ready to present. But certainly I don't think that's going to take place until after the rapture of the church takes place. Now if you think today's been a shock, which it's, it's been somewhat of a shock, and the financial world has exploded. You wait until the rapture of the church takes place, this will be nothing compared to that. The repercussions financially from the rapture of the church is simply going to be something that the world has never fathomed before. But going back to the article going forward, it says EU leaders will probably strike a hopeful tone about the future of the continental bloc. In the coming days, member states uh, led by Germany and France will send messages of unity and even portray the vote as an opportunity to continue with the process of continental integration. But the British vote is the most dramatic event in a long process of political fragmentation in the European Union. Uh, Euroskeptics, uh, par Euro Euroskeptic parties across the continent will present Britain as an example to follow and depending on the depth of the economic impact uh, on the United Kingdom, their moderate rivals will be under pressure to make similar proposals. One of the most critical countries to watch in uh, this regard is France, which faces elections in 2017 and whose main Eurosceptic party, the National Front, is already calling for a similar referendum. With Britain preparing its exit, the more France drifts from the core, the uh, quicker the foundation of the European Union crumbles. Over the long term, the main effect of the uh, British referendum will be geopolitical. Without Britain, the European Union will be missing a liberal, market-friendly member, potentially shifting the balance of power in the bloc to the more uh, protectionist economies in the South. This could exacerbate tensions between Northern and Southern Europe, which are already at odds over issues such as the Schengen Agreement and the management of the Eurozone. A European Union without the United Kingdom will also be less relevant at the international level. 
as the bloc is about to lose one of its few members that has a true global presence militarily, diplomatically, and economically. By the time London and Brussels end the negotiations over their uh, disconnection, the uh, continental bloc will look very different from how it looks today. Well, one thing we need to know is that in bio, as far as Bible prophecy is concerned, this bloc or the European Union is not going away. Yes, it could be uh, under a different heading, but the Bible is clear that uh, the old uh, Roman Empire will be revived, as stated in Revelation. Or I'm sorry, as stated in uh, Daniel 9:25 through 27, and also in Daniel 8:23 through 25, it talks about how this man of sin will rise up quickly and bring the world to its knees. In fact, one of the statements that it indicates is that he will, through peace, destroy many. And you know, that really is somewhat of a contradictory statement, but it's really pretty true. Basically what's going to happen is he's going to try to bring about a peaceful state, but if he doesn't get peace one way, he'll get it another way, and the other way is through violence. So to me, going forward, I believe that the European Union is going to be ultimately reduced down to a 10-nation bloc or a core European Union. And that very well may entail having the other members left behind at a lesser second tier where they can work out their financial troubles or whatever the case may be and at some future date be raised to a, the uh, primary tier of the European Union. But I think at some point in time that this will be reduced to 10 nations. The Antichrist will rise up out of those 10 nations and will bring a prosperity to the European Union or at least to that core and there is where they will leave it at the time. Now, as the Bible states, I don't believe that the European Union will leave the Middle East peace process. In fact, I believe that they'll put more and more effort behind it, along with the international community, and they will force, make strong, whatever the wording you want to put, this agreement for seven years in which Israel will have peace with uh, many. So I would advise you and encourage you at this point in time to keep your eyes on where this is headed and how it relates to bringing peace to the Middle East. Because I believe those are the two core issues that are at stake right now. The rising up of a man coming out of the European Union who will take charge of the peace process. So first of all, he'll take charge of his 10 nation block of countries. And from there, he will encourage peace in the Middle East through international pressure and possibly to the point of sanctions. So right now, even though this looks very bad for the European Union, the Bible is clear that once and for all, it will rise again and usher in the man of sin. And that's where, where I feel that this uh, Brexit is taking us. And certainly, uh, if you don't know the Lord, today's the day of salvation. Every day you put it off is a day that you could lose your life. You know, 150,000 people die every single day. The Bible says that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. It wouldn't shock me if, if, if most of them indicated that they were going to live many years down the road. But in fact, that was their last day. I would encourage you to come to the Lord as soon as you possibly can. And you know, one of the ladies who is doing the translation of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide, she's translating the, uh, the book to German, had her mother, who was not a Christian, be one of the proofreaders of this German translation. And through reading the Tribulation Period Survival Guide, she prayed the prayer of salvation that's enclosed in the book and became a Christian. So even in the translation of this book, people are getting saved. That's why I encourage you uh, Christians that have lost loved ones, get your lost loved ones a copy of this book, whether it be a download, which is free, or you can get the paper book, which you can hand them, because they could get saved ahead of time. You know, this book isn't just for surviving the tribulation period. It's also making people aware that we're very close and that the rapture of the church should take place. And if it does, this is what they have to look forward to after the fact. Oh yes, it also has a large section on how to get saved in it as well. So I would encourage you to get them that copy as quickly as possible. Their time is running out. And if you would like to make an investment in this translation process, as I said, I'm looking to try to do at least half the world, meaning I want half the world to be able to read freely this Tribulation Period Survival Guide. I would ask that you go to my PayPal account, and my PayPal email is Calvary P at calvaryprophecy.com, put in the amount you want to donate, and PayPal will make sure that ends up uh, in my account. Now, most of the donations have been $50 and $100 donations. If you'd like to do that, or more, or less, or whatever the case may be, any way you can help, please consider this. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.